Hi, AP Chemistry students. It's Ms. Johnson, and I'm showing you the answers to the rest of the chapter nine notes. You don't need to worry about this bottom section if you want to just fill in this table. I know it's tiny font. It's because I'm about to show you some models, and there needs to be room on the screen for them. So I will be verbally saying all these answers as I go over them. And remember, um, if you don't get this stuff, it's really challenging. Don't sweat it too much. If you're interested, you can try to um, internalize it, but if it's totally in one ear and out the other. It's not a huge deal. So, single bonds. Um, actually, let me start by talking about how what models I'm going to be using. We know that S orbitals in any energy law or an atom, they have a circular shape. I'm going to use these red circles to represent an S orbital. And then P orbitals, remember P orbitals are a little funky. If we're talking about uh, the first energy level or any energy level, there are three p orbitals. And remember, they have a lobe shape. So on the previous side of this page, we saw that lobe shape for the px, the py, and the pz orbital. So each p orbital has two lobes. I'm going to use this structure to represent the p orbitals. So keep in mind that looks like there's six green circles, but those represent the three p orbitals. Here's the py or I guess I'll do it like this. Here's the PY orbitals up and down, the two lobes, PX orbitals going horizontally across, and then the PZ orbital is coming out of the page. So each of these two lobes is a portion of one of the P orbitals. Okay, now we already talked about how when um, bonds form in a molecule, the orbitals overlap to create what's called hybridized orbitals. I will be using this to represent, or I guess, let me show you this one, a red shaped object like this to represent a hybridized orbital. So it's kind of like a blend of um, the green and the red that I showed you. It's the shape of the green, but the color of the red. So this is going to represent one sp hybridized orbital. All right, let's look at a molecule like CH4. This is called methane. And we know from the previous notes video that methane, CH4, is sp3 hybridized, the carbon is. That's because it's blended 1s and 3p orbitals in its valence shell to come up with these four bonding regions, right? So sp3 hybridized. Let's look at a representation of this using the models. Here is my representation of methane. And here's what's happening with, with this model. The central carbon atom is here, and the bonded hydrogens are represented by the little white structures at the edges of the, the model. These red lobes are representing the sp3 hybridized orbitals. So I have four of them, and they're in a tetrahedral shape. You can see my 109.5 bond angles here between the, the hydrogen atoms. So these represent the orbitals that are housing the bonded electrons. Okay, hopefully that's making sense so far. We are going to take it up a notch and look at a larger molecule, which is ethene. So we've already seen this, it's C2H3. Here is the Lewis dot diagram for, or a Lewis dot diagram for C2H6, excuse me. Um, and I've tried to, draw, tried to draw it in 3D space. We know that it's going to be a single bond holding the two carbons together. So I'm going to show that with two ah, CH3 molecules coming together. So if we try to use our imaginations here, and bear with me as my models are, are quite difficult to work with. Okay. This is my model of ethene C ethane, excuse me, I've been saying it incorrectly, C2H6. Here's what's happening. In the center, where my fingers are pointing right now, there's the two carbon atoms. This red area in the center represents the overlapping sp3 orbital where the bonding electrons are held. The remainder of the red lobes are the other sp3 orbitals that are bonding with hydrogen. So we're looking at a 
a 3D model of what I've drawn on the paper here. So I'll show it one more time. Hopefully you can envision this in your head. So we have four sp3 hybridized orbitals total. Three of them are bonding with the hydrogens. One of them represents the bond between the carbon atoms. So we call this type of bond here between the carbon atoms a sigma bond or any of these bonds, these single bonds, are sigma bonds. We call them that because they're sp3 orbitals that are overlapping with whatever, well, in this case, the two carbons have sp3 orbitals overlapping. So that represents a sigma bond. Okay, now we're gonna take it up a notch and talk about pi bonds, which we have mentioned before. Let's look at a molecule, and this time it really is ethene, C2H4. Here is a Lewis dot diagram for C2H4. And we already know from the notes last class that these, each carbon has an sp2 hybridization. So it's blended together one s and two p orbitals to make three orbitals of equal energy. So I'm going to show you a model of ethene. But before I put it on the screen, let's think about what's not Hybridized. So if 1s and two of the p orbitals have come together to hybridize, that means that there's an additional third p orbital that's unhybridized. That's going to be shown in green. Okay, so let's look at this model here. In this case, I've got my two carbon atoms here. I've got one, uh, the sp3 orbital, excuse me, one of the sp2 orbitals from each carbon is overlapping to create the sigma bond across the center. That looks just like the last one. The other sp2 hybridized orbitals are bonded to the hydrogens. Those are here where my thumbs are and here where my middle fingers are pointing. But then I've got these green unhybridized p orbitals. So remember, even though it looks like there's four green lobes, they're actually on each side, the left and the right, represent one unhybridized p orbital on each of those carbons. Let's call it the p y orbital since they're in the up and down orientation on the screen right now. So we've got our sigma bond across the center just like last time, but now these p orbitals that are unhybridized have overlapping regions that you can't really see in this model, but that we've represented by this white foamy piece going across the, the bonds. So above and below, there's a little bit of P overlap, and that's our pi bond. That is what the second portion of the double bond is, where it's coming from. So one sigma across the center, one pi bond. Even though it looks like there's two white things here representing pi bonds, remember, these are each one P orbital on either side. Um, so these the one p orbital is overlapping with another p orbital. Okay, so that's where sigma and pi come from. And then finally, for ethene, another molecule that we've talked about, C2H2, we've already said that each carbon is sp hybridized, meaning it's blended together one s and one p orbital of its valence shell to house bond. Okay, so then what's unhybridized on carbon? There must be two p orbitals that are unhybridized on carbon. And I'm going to show you what this looks like in a picture form. So this is a picture form of the models that I was showing you. Here's the two carbons. Here is one, just looking at one carbon, here's an sp hybridized orbital bonded with hydrogen. Here is an sp hybridized orbital overlapping with the neighboring carbon. But now there are two p orbitals that are unhybridized. We'll call them the pz because it's sticking out and backwards into space and py because it's going up and down. Now we have pys overlapping with names and pz overlapping with the neighboring pz. Each of these is called a pi bond. So we say that a triple bond is one sigma and two pi's. One sigma being the overlapping sp orbital here two pi's coming from the two unhybridized p orbitals. So that's where this crazy terminology is coming from. And you can hopefully see why from the models. Um, in the notes, it says that sigma bonds 
have a larger bond energy. You could just tell in the way those models were, there was more overlap. Um, the molecules were closer together in that, that region of the sigma bond, um, so that makes them a little bit more stable. Pi bonds are lower energy, they're less stable, I guess you could say, and you can see how little overlap there was in our molecular models. Um, we had to show that overlap of a little piece of foam above and below. So maybe you're thinking, why is a triple bond stronger than, than a single bond? But remember, the triple bond has the sigma bond, but it has the two pi bonds in addition. So even though the pi bonds themselves are less um, stable than a single bond, than the sigma bond, in total, there is more stability with the triple bond. Okay, and that's it for chapter nine.